Welcome to the monthly updates in Touch Designer. As you know, I am creating a suite of custom components in Touch Designer, and I thought of making a video that provides a brief overview of each one so you can always stay up to date. Chapter 1. Overview. Let's review the next custom components. 1. Pseudo liquids. 2. Chromatic delusions. 3. Steal the palette. 4. Pick the color. 5. Save the cam. Chapter 2. Custom components. I'm really excited to show you how I'm applying each one in this particular composition. We'll dive into various components that I've been working on and explore their applications. In this network, each square contains one of the elements I'm using, which are part of the suite of components I've made for Touch Designer, and I'll show you a bit about each one. The first component I'm using is called Chromatic Illusions, and it's a component entirely made with GLSL. It allows us to create backgrounds, textures, tiles, and more. Right now, I'm creating this texture, which is being used to generate this in a 3D environment, which we'll see later. To give a simple overview of Chromatic Illusions, I'll open a new one here. It starts with a sphere, and if we go to the parameters, we can do basic things like size, rotation, and converting the sphere into a star with different points. I can use gradient colors set to red, green, and blue by default, and I have an offset for these gradients to move them around as textures on the sphere, as you can see here. In the light tab, we have various lighting options. Manipulating this illumination value is very interesting. I have a light point that I can move on the X, Y, and Z axis, and obviously I can set any other color for this light. I invite you to explore other aspects of the component. One of the most interesting is the formation option. It allows creating deformations on both axes, which can be quite dramatic and unusual. Finally, we have the cloner that allows cloning on the X and Y axis. You can apply an offset to distance the clones. This translate, depending on the number of clones, could make it almost infinite if you have a sufficient number of clones to keep moving continuously. Let's remove the clones. Finally, we have another option, the fragment, which creates different types of tiles. We can deform on the X axis. And obviously, you can manipulate all these colors as well. Here, for instance, I'm using chromatic illusions to create a normal, emit, color, and height maps that are applied in the actual texture of this particular composition. So if we manipulate, for example, the deformation and remove all deformation, the texture changes dramatically. Let's go to our next component, pseudo liquid. This is a component you already know. This time it's in version three, and it allows me to modify all parameters in the same component and has different modes starting with bypass, where nothing happens. And then we have modes like plastic move, kaleidoscopic, models, feedback, glass, and the last one I called obsidian. I'll leave it in plastic. In presets, I can save and load all the presets you created. For example, liquid metal, iridescent, psilocybin, gradient, and others. I'll leave it here, but you can manipulate any parameter. For example, the period, go to presets and save with any name. Let's call this pink and save it here. If I load, all save parameters load. To check, I switch to another and back, and you can see that the new preset loaded. Change the name and you'll see an error. After that, go to the other tab and click on reset. This will fix the error. I'm not using much pseudo liquid in this composition, but I'm taking the colors it gives me to show you two tools I've created that are part of the customized color manipulation tools in Touch Designer that I'm developing. The first tool, Still de Palette, generates a color palette based on the image here. It works in real time, but the first time you activate it, it takes a few seconds for Touch Designer to load the Python libraries. After that, the response is practically real time. Each time you click Get Palette, an approximate color palette is generated, and you can see it in this color grid. This doesn't have much contrast, so it gives this palette. But we can choose something more contrasted, like this green, and click again to update. If the image changes, I can keep selecting as it changes. With this palette component, we have several outputs. The first gives the list of colors we're using in a DAD operator.
The second gives the palette itself, which we can use elsewhere. The last and most interesting creates a gradient ramp with options to manipulate. For example, to see this ramp better, we can make it vertical. The phase is animated now. Let's stop it here. And now we see the ramp created with these colors. Clicking Get Palette again updates if the colors change with the image. Let's return to Circular, leave the phase animating, and move this a bit. I'm using this component as a color ramp generator for my material in Specular Matte and Ambient Occlusion Matte. Yes, it is quite subtle now, and this composition is probably not the best example to apply still to palette, but without a doubt, it has many ways to be applied in our daily work with Touch Designer. The other component is Pick to Color. This tool lets you choose from various color palette types. For instance, any color you choose with the mouse will be reflected in this rectangle below. Let's disconnect this input for a moment. Now, any selected color provides RGB numbers that you can see in this null which you can reference to any component that reads RGB numbers. For example, selecting from the classic rainbow palette gives the chosen colors. There's also a grayscale gradient, and I've included some useful color palettes. You can change palettes, selecting what you want, vintage, pastels, etc. In this case, I've used this color to assign to a constant that is tinting the overall color of this composition in the post-processing network. I've also added a top input in Pick to Color that can receive both images and videos. For example, we can connect the ramp and take these color values in real time. Or we can connect the output of Steal the Palette to the input of Pick to Color and click on any color we want to use. This pink is interesting. Let's not manipulate too much to avoid confusion. So this works for now. Finally, the last component, one of the most interesting and challenging to develop, allows you to save all camera positions used here. In Options, set the camera name. You can use any name you want. Once set, move the camera and save. The new position saves. The output gives all values. I added a lag to have a smooth transition between each of the camera movements. Switching to position three, four, five, recording various positions. Position zero is the default. The lag can also be short for quick movements. Playing with constant camera moves is very easy. In the reset option, you can delete all camera positions and start from scratch. You can record thousands of camera positions, though I doubt you'll need that many. It's almost infinite. It's set from zero to 12 here, but you can keep recording indefinitely. That's all. I hope these tools are useful. All these components are on my Patreon, I hope they're very useful for you. Please subscribe to the channel, like, and hit the bell icon. See you in the next one.